Welcome to Slamfire Radio, episode 548. Today is, it's not that, yeah, it's March 20th, 2024. I am one of your hosts, Kyle. And I'm one of your hosts, Adriel, that updated the date. Yeah. It didn't look right to me, but no, it, it is Correct. the 20th. Yeah. That's that's where we're at right now. Yeah. <clears throat> and uh, yeah, everyone else is just gallivanting. I thought that like Kelly was gonna be on tonight, so I thought I'd wear like my my good shirt. But, oh yeah, uh, yeah. She's not here for the gun show. I don't know. <laughs> Disappointing. Disappointing. Yeah. But in any case, soldier yeah. on. Yeah, and uh, we'll get into what we did in guns. And Adriel, why don't you kick us off? Sure. Yeah. Uh, I did some stuff. I went to a three gun build day and shooting range vi- visit. Uh, took uh, I had my nephew at my place, so I took him and my son, and we both went <laughs> to the range. I, I made them work. They're teenage boys. They could list. They got to lift some steel. I'm like, yeah, you guys put put in the work. Nice. <laughs> the next day, they were like, I'm so sore. <laughs> <laughs> Good. <laughs> uh yeah so we did that that was that was fun yeah there was actually a lot of people we had a lot of people show up for the uh range and uh, cleanup day which is great made for light work uh because we had so many people working it just uh we got everything done that we wanted to get done uh, in a pretty pretty quick time uh i took my wsmcr on the range and this is after i i put in the the new guide rod and it seemed to work a lot better and i got one shot off and uh, it stopped working and it wouldn't want to go into battery. And I was like, oh, hmm, still broken. And I mean, it would go into battery if you like slammed it hard enough, but you'd fire again and the bolt wouldn't quite be in battery. And I was like, what is causing this? This is so weird. Uh, I got it home. I just decided to take the whole damn thing apart. And once I did, I found the issue pretty quickly. And that was my, uh, my gas piston. It was, uh, it was an S shaped. Uh, <laughs> I, I, I straighten this one uh, through some uh, caveman logic, but it's still nice. not straight enough, so it's uh, it's not going to work. So good, I guess I found another one. This that's one thing that happens on these 180s, the WSMCR and the WK180 is uh, is the pistons snap or break right there uh, or there, just somewhere in here. Mine bent and became unshootable. Uh, but some of them, uh, the ones I've seen have been broken, right? I haven't seen them like been like that, but yeah, that happens too. That is one of the reasons why I'm glad I've ordered a, a rifle that doesn't have a piston. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, I, so I don't deal with these issues when it comes up, uh, it comes in, who knows, but we'll see. Uh, yeah. So I ordered one of these and I ordered a couple of recoil springs from Kodiak and I'll put those in. Hopefully the Kodiak and the WSMCR piston work on each other. I think they do. I, I checked on True North Arms and it seemed to say that they did, but uh, I don't know. Like, Hopefully. So is that like just a Gen 2 piston then? Because I didn't recall the piston from Gen my one. Gen 1 was a little bit different than what you showed there, I think. This is Gen 1. Gen okay. 2 is thicker. It's thick, okay. got a thicker uh, back on there. Okay. Hopefully they're the same because I don't yeah. want to have to get like the other stuff. Yeah. Uh yeah, so I guess that'll that'll do it. I got my uh the Savage 99 right here. Took that out. Uh it was great. But it, it cycles so smoothly, way smoother than like a Winchester 94 or, or 336. There's uh there's a little bit less going on in there. And uh yeah. Ran, ran smooth. I fired like five rounds through it, and I was like, yeah, it runs, and it's got iron sights, and it's shooting the things I'm aiming at, which was dirt, and uh, that's all I'm going to do. So got that review coming up. <clears throat> uh, I also shot the uh, tiny little uh, straight pull gun right there. Yeah. Shot okay. It, it needs to be like really firmly slammed forward into battery. Hopefully that issue is a little bit easier on when I get my 300 blackout barrel for it, which I should get, I don't know, in April or May or something like that. Got a buddy of mine to pick it up from Red Deer Shooting Center, so I now I just got to cross paths with him, and uh, I will be building up my teeny tiny hunting rifle. Nice. Teeny tiny little guy. <laughs> 300 nice. Blackout. It'll be like a, 
close range only (laughs) kind of of a rifle very close range only yeah aka like reach out and touch them kind of a thing with your finger not with like yeah (laughs) yeah (laughs) Yeah, i imagine Uh, i'll be lobbing a bit it'll be lobbing a bit i'm I'm using the 110 i'm going to use the 110 grain bullets in it so they'll be a little bit faster but it's still like it's not going to get a ton of a 300 blackouts actually pretty good in a short barrel. It, it doesn't need a lot of barrel to get some decent speed, but it's still not a very long barrel and it's still not a lot of power to begin with. Uh, so it's going to be a close range kind of a kind of rifle anyways. Uh, Like from a tree stand, tree stand, yeah. 50 yards. That'll be fine. Right. Perfect. Yep. Yep. Uh, I had my kids shooting the Jericho because Right now he shoots the Glock, Glock 34. Uh, my older my older boy shoots the Glock 34 at uh, three gun. But I wanted him to shoot a gun that I can put in my belt and use the mags from uh, as backup. So I'm, I'm, I'm trying to convince him to use the Jericho. So we brought the Jericho out. He was shooting at 50 meters, uh, the steel, IP6 size steel plates and hammering them. So I think I convinced him. It's got a better trigger yeah. pull than the Glock, a bit heavier. So they got convinced him on that. So now I got to redo his belt for those magazines. Uh, yeah, that was the range visit. Uh, I ran. Uh, I went to Princess Auto to get some like tire rack things, and uh, I ran into uh, a listener and uh, follower, uh, Brian. He also went to a Maple Seed as well. I-, I was buying like a tire rack, and he's like, "Oh, you're buying a tire rack?" I'm like, "Yeah." He's like, "I got one of those in my shed." been sitting on it for like two years it's better than that one you know you want to buy that one for less i'm like yeah yeah i do <laughs> so i put that one back and went over to his place and bought a tire rack off of him nice which is kind of fun uh what else i do i've been uh, continuing to print lots of stuff i've been getting a lot of people emailing me saying like oh now that i know someone with 3d prints can you do one of these or can you build one of these and uh one of the more interesting ones was a uh, uh another firearms inst- instructor was like, hey, uh, could you print a barrel, the inside of a barrel with a cutaway on it that would show the difference between like a two and three quarter inch chamber and a three inch chamber and the forcing cone and let you put the 20 gauge in there and cut away so you can see all of the stuff inside. Mm. I'm like, yeah, yeah, I can do that. So printed up V1 yesterday. Uh, the sizes didn't print properly so <laughs> <laughs> i am reprinting it uh, as we speak but uh like that's just one of four custom uh jobs that uh, that my kid's working on right now he designed it all uh and uh yeah with my input on specs and numbers and all that kind of stuff uh the final version i think we're going to do a double barrel so it's like one barrel is going to be two and three quarter the other one's going to be three inch uh oh, chamber okay. on it. yeah yeah yeah, just to kind of have a visual to show people, you know, what the chamber's like on those. Yeah. Uh, I also printed an air uh, bolt head receiver cover for like your hitch on the back of your vehicle. Yeah. How long did that take? Uh, 12 hours, something oh, like that. Oh, okay. That's not bad. Yeah. Yeah. Part one was like seven and part two was like four or five. And yeah, got it on there. Also, that was someone else who's like, hey, you should print one of these. I'm like, I should. I'm gonna keep one for myself. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I'll I'll keep the pro the crappy prototype, and he'll get the second version that's a little bit better. Uh, and then this weekend, oh man, so this pal course this weekend, I'm like, oh man, there's only like five people that are signed up for this thing until this week. Now it's full. <laughs> <laughs> All these people are like, you got one this weekend, you got this one this weekend. It's like boom, 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 boom. All of a sudden, it's like, okay, now it's now it's full, I guess, which was uh, it's kind of cool. Uh, I think my my April 6th one is full and my April 20th one isn't. And my first our pal one's full now too. And that's in June. Hmm. Maybe I got to maybe I got to see if about getting another our pal one open. Anyways, yeah. yeah. Yeah, uh things are things are definitely going well there. My I think my uh like my map listing if you search for like pal courses Edmonton my map listing is starting to show up like higher so I'm starting to get people who are just haven't heard of me from Sherwood Park or anything like that or just randomly calling or emailing or whatever asking to uh, to get into a course nice yeah yeah so things are going well there uh i'm really gonna have to well my uh my new piston and recoil springs should be here in like a day or so and that's what i need to get my wsmcr back up and running 
Uh, because otherwise, geez, I don't know what I would run in a match right now. Maybe 22, maybe PCC. PCC. I would run my I would get my Ruger PC carbine. That's uh that's my pal kit. Stick a firing pin in it, take the tear the disabled <laughs> sticker off of it and uh, and get it rolling again. <laughs> you were supposed to get the high point going for that. Okay, so <laughs> I looked at it. I'm like, oh, it's a firing pin. I got to cut the firing pin on it, but then it'll still work. Okay, no problem. I'll just cut the firing pin. The firing pin is also the ejector. Huh? Uh huh. Firing pin's the ejector. It uses the firing pin as the ejector. So it uses it to fire and it also uses it to push the case off and eject the stupid thing. Hmm. So uh, I took it to my pal course. What was it like a month ago or whatever? And I like put a dummy in it pull back and the dummy's just like staying on <laughs> nope staying on <laughs> firing pin firing pin so now i need to find another firing pin just to make that stupid thing operable again uh and i got a winchester wildcat as a pal rifle and it is great it is fantastic as a pal rifle i'm gonna get another one because it's so good <laughs> like everything everything's exactly it's nice and light because i'm putting like five guns in a case so the case is like super heavy afterwards it's nice to use a little bit lighter of a gun uh it locks open it feeds well the safety's easy to use the magazine release eh, take your pick it's got a couple of them on there you know it's uh it's just very easy to use so i am uh yeah maybe i'll just order another one of those anywho that's uh, about it for me what about you uh it got up to, well, I guess, I wasn't on last week, but uh, over the last couple of weeks, there's actually been a fair bit. So a couple of weekends ago, I went and shot in Lubbock, shot a pistol match in Lubbock, and it started off good. You know, in the first three stages, went good, was really happy with it. And then, of course, the next three stages kind of went to crap. Started taking some some mics and that so so yeah it wasn't uh great and of course one of them was classifier <laughs> mm. <laughs> so <laughs> so you didn't get out of the the d's oh, yet hey no that's <laughs> oh that's gonna be a long time coming i think <laughs> that's so funny <laughs> uh and another thing so crystal was shooting good she was yeah, she was shooting good, and then she just she was kept saying, like, I can't get my dot. And she ended up just giving up in the middle of the stage, like, she can't find a dot. I said, okay, well, can you, is it that you can't find your dot, or it went out on you? I said, I don't know. So she was looking around, and she found a piece of glass and was asking around. Then she decided to check her pistol. And uh, with her pistol... <laughs> oh, that's the, your carry handle now. Yeah. So her... Her dot on her pistol is now a carry handle because it has no glass in it. Uh, Bushnell. Bushnell. So which, I. Which dot is that? That is oh, it's the RXS one hundred. So Never it's heard of it. it's a hundred and ten dollar US dot. Mm -hmm. But uh, but yeah. So today I'm catching up on stuff because almost right after. Lubbock, I was packing up, getting ready to head out of town for um, Phoenix, but uh, sent an email saying, hey, I need to get this warrantied. And, uh, and yeah, so. And uh -huh. uh, to answer Tony here, he's saying, how is it not a loophole? Um, actually, I have to sell, send my Delta Point Pro back because it likes to shut off after about five, ten minutes. And a lot sooner than it should. Mm -hmm. But uh, also, with being down in the U.S., uh, my formal relationship with Korth, it, it doesn't make sense. We all kind of decided that, it, you know, Canadian distributor yeah. in the U.S., so, like, they're still... I'm still friends with them. I still like their stuff. But, yeah, so I officially do not represent Leupold, so which did actually open me up to really check out other stuff. So we got Roswell this weekend. So I actually have on my Zev, I have the EOTech EFLX 
that I think I will throw on the Canic for her to shoot this weekend if we decide to go shoot. Oh, that's fancy sounding. So I picked that up uh, Black Friday sale. I think three or four hundred bucks. And so far, I I like it. Like it's got turn it on and then it'll just shut off, auto shut off, or then you can turn it on and have it shake awake. I so, like that one. Yeah, I like I think, just leaving it on to shake awake. And I think it's a uh, six MOA dot. Hmm. Yeah, yeah, six MOA dot. Uh, so yeah, so if we go to Roswell, she'll shoot that one. Uh, but uh, now, so Tuesday I drove to Phoenix for Superstition Mountain. And uh, it was a good drive. Got there, yeah, got there in good time to hang out with the guys and whatnot. Uh, warranty, oh yeah, Bushnell, it should be under warranty. Uh, loophole should fix the dot too. I, I read that the loophole was a common thing. I don't know why, but yeah. Uh, yeah, so Wednesday we were basically shopping, building guns for the guys and everything. Uh, I did take the get the guys into Timney, so all their housemates that came down from Canada went and uh, did a tour around Timney and mm -hmm. actually checked out their new AK trigger. Wow. Wow. <laughs> You think like gritty mill spec, mill spec like like your S SKS trigger or something like that, and mm -hmm. then you put like a competition trigger in that. It's that was crazy. So now I have to now I have to buy an EK. <laughs> I how'd you not think you had to before? Well, because I didn't have a trigger for it. Now with having that trigger, it's like oh I can have something good and have a good. I can build up an AK and have that good Timney trigger in there. Did you and buy the, the trigger first and now you're going to buy an AK? No. Once I get the AK, I will write, uh, uh, I'll write an email to Timney and say, I have one now. Pretty please. Put yep. one of them fancy ass triggers in the mail for me. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, now I'm getting the grief for not buying an AK yet. <laughs> <laughs> and a foul. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I did talk to some guys, so I'm either going to be looking at like a Galil or oh. Zustava or an Arsenal. The Arsenal was actually, it's actually a milled receiver with pins, not stamped. Like, yeah, it's not a stamped receiver with rivets. And I, I don't know. I haven't looked at the Galils that closely to, to tell, but, uh, but yeah, so there we'll see. Hopefully soon. That's just another pit to fall into build trying to build a race AK. <laughs> well, maybe just don't build a race AK. Maybe just build an AK without the race part. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but uh yeah, definitely getting some grief for not having an AK yet. Uh so yeah, after that uh, Thursday night or well, Thursday we went walk stages, sighted in guns, everything, and then Thursday night we went to Ben Avery, the Cactus Tactical guys. There they put on a match, like a little pistol match every Thursday night, mm -hmm. and so yeah, we went all went and shot that, and I shot my best pistol match I've ever shot. Like, hands down, it was my best pistol match I ever shot. I uh, got. I think I was 12th overall out of 106 shooters and wow. second in limited. Wow. At, at 93%. So 93% to a major limited shooter and I'm shooting minor. Which that's how I lost first was because I just every every Charlie I shot was mm -hmm. a, like I cuz I shot more alphas, less Charlies than him. The guy in first shot did a mic and a no shoot. I didn't have any mics or no shoots, but because of every Charlie that I shot that wasn't an alpha, every Charlie I was losing a point on. Yeah. Yeah. So, so that was, that was uh, rather encouraging. <laughs> it was a good way to enter the, the weekend. And yes, up there surrounded by masters. So, so yeah, I was, well, I sent posted it on the discord and everything because yeah i was pretty stoked after that 
But uh, then we got up early Friday morning, and we uh, we were starting to we're starting superstition first thing like the gate opened at six fifteen, and we were shooting morning squads in the rain. <laughs> so this is the first time that it's rained for this match for me since I started going to it. Not but uh, started off it was okay. Uh, they they really ramped up the difficulty this year. Yeah, holy cow. Uh, a lot of long range, like a lot of targets past three, 400 yards. They even had one out to 620 yards. Whoa. Yeah. Oh, nice. Love it. Yeah. Where the last few years, they barely gotten past 300. Hmm. So, yeah. That's a big uh, difference. Yeah. Yeah. Some good things. My stage plans, I feel like I made good stage plans and I don't think a single stage plan was a bad one or a really disadvantageous uh, stage plan. Mm -hmm. I think they were very efficient and very close to like what would be a good stage plan. Uh, I had a number of issues. I would say mainly my long range. My long range was a huge killer for me. Mm -hmm. uh, another one that really killed me was my shotgun started from malfunctioning. Uh, my auto lifter would like catch halfway up and wouldn't load a shell, and so that that cost me a bit of time on a few stages. And dicking with that, I've I've heard that about those auto lifters. I've heard yeah. from a couple people that yeah they took theirs out of their gun. Yeah, I'm I'm really debating it, but uh, I think it's a spring, and found out that. Jay Kenny says they want you to change the spring in there every six to 12 months. I've had that for, well, since pre ban and I've mm -hmm. never changed it. So has it been running the whole time really well though? Uh, it's been like up until this match, I, I would say like I was having like mag tube issues, which, you know, Briley spring says six, they, they say even that they say six months if it's left in the gun. So I was thinking that was some issues and it would get better, but it's been kind of like 95% mm. is what I was reading it. And then this match, it was, it was not 95%. And, uh, yeah. So I do have, have a spare spring at a, here. At a major match, right? Yeah, for sure. I mean, the shotgun work alone didn't cost the long range really hurt. Like just, I, I spent a bit of time trying to find some targets and, then yeah just being able to to hit target so i i'm gonna be spending some time at the range practicing that more because that that is a major failing for me like inside of 300 i'm good all the targets that was we were inside of 300 i did fine on it was just everything beyond that well that so uh, you, you sent over your stage 10 which is kind of like your your best stage that looked yeah. good you're you're shooting standing there uh, yeah, so stage 10, yeah, that was my best stage of the match, which I ended up getting a sixth place finish on that stage of my division. And looking at it, like, I easily shave, like, six, seven, I could get that sub 80 second and would have been able to, to move that up a couple spaces. Uh, there was one stage I shot, which was a pistol rifle that, once again, the stage plan worked or the execution of the stage plan wasn't exactly, but I was able to make it up and shot a really good time on it. Unfortunately, it was a short stage and I did take one FTN on the port pistol portion. And at first mm -hmm. I was like, oh, okay, one FTN. Yeah, sure, I'll, I'll take that. But then turns out, yeah, I, I sat down and thought about it. Short stage like that, that one FTN, five second penalty, cost me 10 places. <laughs> Ouch. Yeah, that would have been uh, eighth place run, and it knocked me down to seventeenth on that stage. So, so yeah, like I, I did have some a, a few good runs, but then once again, like I, I got to get shooting clean. Like I had hundred and ten seconds worth of penalties throughout the whole match. So, you know, I'd like to blame weather, but the weather was bad for a short portion of it, but. I mean, it was just a combination of, of stuff, and I just got to get straight in the head. Uh, still, And the weather's bad for everyone, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh, overall, 
you know, with everything, I ended up finishing 25th out of 64 in tactical. So pretty much about where I finished last year. And then, uh, yeah, it was a overall 147 out of 383. So once again, looking at everything, I, if I clean up those few things, I will jump up in the standings quite significantly. So, so yeah, definitely got my stuff I got to work on and like get my shotgun running 100%. And then, yeah, definitely practice the long range, especially coming into the next couple matches here. Uh, it, a couple cool things. So our squad was basically, we had the Canadians, uh, except for one, he ended up having, because he was a late entry, he had to squad on a different squad. Uh, Californians and one Texan. So we basically dubbed ourselves the gun control squad. <laughs> the gun control squad. Yeah. You needed a New Yorker on there. Yeah. <laughs> Rounded out. Yeah, no doubt. Uh, what else here? Oh, yeah. I was playing around with my shotgun, trying to clean up there the one night, and my nice, beautiful Damascus charging handle... Uh, I, I could not get it, pull it out. We tried putting pliers on it. I had to grab a flat blade and actually start prying it out of the shotgun. And like, it's got some nice marks on there where the, where the bolt is literally dented into the stem. And then the stem itself is bent. And, uh, Luckily, you know we, why? Was it just seized in there, or? Oh, I think just, just through use, because I looked at if you pulled the uh, your handle out and look at that pull, bolt when it comes in and out of the receiver. There's the bottom part of the bolt that does contact your uh, bolt, your charging handle on extraction. I think this was just a su such a soft metal that, with doing that, that yeah, it, it's not as hard as other charging handles out there. So, so yeah, that was unfortunate because I really like this charging handle, but I've gone back to a Terran one because that's what we had on hand. And, uh, yeah, uh, I pulled interesting thing off the table. I ended up pulling a certificate for Desert Tech, the Quattro 15 lower, which is the lower, which uh, mates up to their, uh, your quad mag 53 so it's a quad stack 53 round mag so they had to uh make the meg your meg well wider to fit that meg <laughs> what am i looking at so it's a lore that fits giant magazines yeah but it does come with an adapter for normal mags huh yeah. <laughs> that thing's wild. <laughs> so, like, I saw it and shot it and been hearing about it. Yeah, it's interesting. I wasn't going to spend money on it myself, so I saw it out on the table. Pretty much all the other guns were gone, so I was like, yeah, what the heck. Mm -hmm. And then uh, one of the guys at the house had uh, picked up an upper off the table and decided to give it to me since he couldn't bring it back. And so mm -hmm. I think I'm going to make a like a total ridiculous build out of that. Because the yeah, upper well. is an A1 charging or carry handle style upper. Oh. So I'm going to do <laughs> the A1 front post and carry handle on a uh, Quattro 15. <laughs> well, you won't run out of ammo with it. No. I'll still have more when I put in my D60 in my normal gun, but... Yeah. Uh, speaking of shotguns, I did pick up a new handguard for it something i've been eyeing up for for a few years now but just because of price and everything i i didn't go for it but briley was at the match and i got peer pressured into buying it so i got the briley m lock handguard the long oh, one that looks dope oh for my benelli <laughs> that so. looks cool and when they actually put it out, like they're developing a Ventrib 45 degree sight that'll just bolt right onto there. So I'll get that put on there. And I, I like the handguard. It yeah, it took me a while, but yeah, it feels good. Yeah, it looks and, pretty cool. Yeah, there's a 
few other purchases. Bought some novelty mags. So for the uh, for the weebs out there, there's, there's that one. Here's my stack stamp. Oh, that was yours. I thought you were just taking pictures of some. <laughs> no, no, I, I actually picked these up. And then uh, then there's this one. It's not illegal. It's just undocumented. So, so yeah. And we also, we stopped, uh, well, where I've been getting most of my ammo, uh, True Shot, I actually stopped in there. And they had these uh, Savior bags on for five bucks. You're muted. I said killer. That's a great yeah. price. So, like, in one of these, I got over 500 pistol rounds, a ton of rifle, and in two bags, I can get 125 rounds. So, a lot nicer than carrying around ammo cans, and you easily got your, your match ammo. And, uh... Oh. So... Oh yeah, I picked up a new action camera as well. Tried it out at the match. It was good. So I picked up one of the Insta360s uh, Go 3s. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, worked out pretty good. And uh, worked out in the Jeep pretty good. That The mic in this thing is incredible. Now, you don't really tell from like shooting videos, but we took a day to go off-roading. And I was watching mm -hmm. some of the video Just that I just put it up on the dash. And I had the stereo turned up in there and I put it on the stereo in my studio and it's like, I just, I'm playing the song. Actually, it's better, it's louder than what Spotify plays on my computer. <laughs> and yeah, sounds good. And yeah, so far I like the footage that come out of it. Uh, Craig and I on Wednesday, we got an email where that uh, we got into Texas Three Gun Championship. Or middle of April so that'll be the next big match and one that I definitely got my I get my long range dialed in for mm -hmm. because that one is all open terrain and they like their distance and uh, yeah and yeah like I said possibly go do Roswell on Saturday and then I uh, actually entered for my elk and deer draws today because it because the draws closed at five o'clock today, so. Uh, for your area? Yeah, yeah, for New Mexico. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah I think you're still good till June. <laughs> I don't know. I I, or maybe I missed June. them last year. I'm not going to miss them again. <laughs> uh, yeah. Overall, good match. Disappointed in my performance, but. Uh, Still some still some pluses to, to bring away from there. And uh Yeah. That's pretty much that's it for me. Cool. So we'll uh get into upcoming events. And I got one in here. Uh the Peace River MP three G dates are out. Uh so that's for the Mighty Peace three gun. And they're so they're in Peace River. They're going to have a match on May 11th, June 22nd, July 27th, 28th, which is uh, Steve O's retirement match, and then September 28th. Allegedly. Yeah, allegedly. <laughs> well, retirement from working, not retirement from matches. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So because he was saying last year he was thinking about retiring. From oh, matches. He's been saying that for like six years. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I didn't. I didn't. I. It didn't look credible when he said it when I was there. <laughs> yeah, uh, and then September twenty eighth, twenty ninth is the team match. So, and they don't do practice score. You get onto the May Peace Three Gun Facebook page, and really the Peace River matches is just show up in the morning before nine thirty they do safety brief at 9 30 if you show up after that you don't shoot you just stay at the range and yeah you know have some fun exactly uh then we'll get into the news and uh 223 is getting harder to find that is in the news yeah it's a thing yeah and that's pretty much all the news that we have for this week and so we will mm -hmm. go right into new gun stuff new gun stuff is brought to you by bullseye north 
Need a new boomstick? Bullseye North is Canada's shooting superstore and a proud supporter of the CCFR. With a wide selection of guns and top trading gear for any shooter. They have free shipping over $250, some exclusions apply, and they also have $17 flat rate shipping for orders below $250. Uh, go to the website, subscribe to their newsletter for uh, access to the hottest deals. But don't and... don't share the URL on Facebook or we're yeah. gonna get zucked again. Yeah, no, I'm I'm not doing that. I got zucked and, for uh... that, and I got zucked for someone's uh, uh, on my pictures of the Savage Nine. They're like, "Oh, are those cheap? What do those go for these days?" I'm like, "Anywhere between five and seven hundred bucks." Zucked. <laughs> That's <laughs> firearm sell sales. No, it's not. Anywho. <laughs> now I'm being yeah. told to check Discord. Discord. Discord, Discord, oh. Discord. Yeah, Tony added a bunch of uh, BTSA matches. They're all on practice score, Buffalo Target Shooters Association. So you go there, you'll see all their upcoming matches. They got uh, USPSA nights. Uh, actually, yeah, I believe any end of april they have a rifle match like an ipsic style rifle match so that'll be fun rifle if i have a rifle that runs yeah <laughs> it's not a guarantee so uh so yeah you can go check out there for everything going on down there uh now new gun stuff uh you want to go through these yeah or... i got them up here you okay. you talked about some of them so i'll show them and you talk okay so uh when I uh, I went through there, I thought this was kind of cool, especially considering I live in a small space now. But uh, they have Frankfurt Arsenal Platinum Series reloading stands for two hundred and four dollars, but the sale ends tonight. But it's two hundred and forty dollars regular, and looks kind of cool. The side tables fold down, and then you got like oh, yeah. almost like keyboard style stands for your feet, and it folds up. And yeah, you know, it, I, I'm not going to test how well it works, but it looks like it would actually work pretty good. Looks like it would fold down pretty nice and tight. Yeah. Get out of the way. Cool. Yeah. <clears throat> and uh, Bullseye also has 15% off all their Wheeler gunsmithing tools. And I believe that one is, they are on sale till March 27th. Uh, oh, seventy nine dollars. Yeah, so Range View, so Bullseye still has the Gen X mags, but uh, Range View Sports has the Cam Pro Gen X mags on for seventy nine ninety nine. You now that's a great deal if you're local. If you buy yeah. those, online, oh, you're probably they're, shipping. They're sh yeah, their shipping is always a little bit expensive. Yeah, yeah, but seventy nine bucks is incredible. What do we got here? Uh, so range view sports also they have the radiant weapons afterburner and ramjet combo barrel and compensator for a glock 19 gen 4 they are selling that pack for 722 dollars and 83 cents and it's not threaded so the barrel is cut out and then the comp goes on with a wedge pin which centers it everything's pretty interesting yep that's interesting all right pretty funky yeah if you want something funky that's great yeah. if you just want a yeah. barrel of and i'd say like it's the length of a, your thread so maybe half three quarters of an inch past your slide mm -hmm. is what this sticks out neat yeah and next up Lundero Sports has their Wiley X glasses on for 40% off. So that's Lundero, L-O-N-D-E-R-O. -E I hadn't heard of them before, but uh, yeah. I have. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Valus, Wiley X, I want to see, is that it? That must be they, it. I think they have about, about a dozen yeah. models of glasses. Sabers, safety glasses, Klein gunmetal, crimson mirror. They've got a couple on there. Neat. Soli Outdoors has a, a cheap Stevens 320 security thumbhole. 
cylinder bore. I have one. I use it for a uh, PAL course gun. I have one in 20 gauge. Hmm. Yeah. 229. That is very reasonable. And you're saying the 223 is running out. Their sweet deal with 855 ran out. I was mentioning some of the three gun guys and they started buying. I'm not saying I sold them out, but I helped. <laughs> you did your part. I did my part. I kind of wanted, like, I don't want the M855 for like for three gun matches. I just kind of wanted to have some just to have it. Not a thousand rounds, but mm, yeah. I kind of want to get some. Well, I already have some 223. I'm just going to keep using the stuff I have and just hang on for cheaper prices and better days. Yeah. Take me through. Take <laughs> me through. Cool. Anyways, that's all the stuff I could find. Yeah. Okay. Uh, we didn't really have a main topic tonight because I figured I was going to be taking up a fair bit of time talking about uh, my last little bit. My not sure. No. Um, actually, I forgot. I was going to show that picture during that, but here's one. If you're getting a house for uh, you know, shooting, you have a group of guys. Size of the kitchen mm -hmm. table is really important. As we this was, we were drying out our guns after the first day because it was rain and it was just. Oh, that's a, what you're doing. <laughs> yeah, I thought it was we, just we showing them off. We might add it a couple more to to help the the picture, but no, it was it was quite a few guns sitting there drying out from uh, from getting rained on. And uh, another one, even though you may not like lens caps, know where they're at and bring them to the range. The first stage, I I thought I left lens lens caps at the house because I hate shooting with them, and mm -hmm. so the first stage, I I couldn't see when I went down to all my scope, wipe the wipe the rain off, and I was able to get through it. And then before the next long range stage, I was like, oh actually I think maybe, and I reached in my bag, and yeah, sure enough, there's the the lens caps. And then I forgot to flip them up once I grabbed my rifle. <laughs> <laughs> So I don't deal with these problems with a red dot because even if the thing was completely occluded, I just yeah. shoot both eyes open yeah. and it's still it's so close enough. One of the guys shooting on the Thursday night, he was shooting uh carry optics. He might have been shooting actually limited optics with an occluded dot. On his pistol? Yep. Cool. Yeah, just yeah. to to, to fo force that uh target focus. Mm -hmm. And yeah, he he was quick cool uh but we will uh we'll go into listener feedback and uh you want to take this email from tony yeah you better do uh from tony good evening slam fire crew short and maybe sweet strikes twice because see attached and attached was a photo of his rim on his vehicle and it looked not happy a little <laughs> bit dented Ah, uh, to everyone's surprise, Kodiak did not respond yet. I guess I would have to keep waiting. <clears throat> I shot my progressive 9mm reloads on the clock and didn't blow up, so that's something. Cool. Tony will be bring you the cost an analysis for his next reloading journey next time. Uh, by the way, your Android phone may show the Canadian Firearms Program as Girl Guides of Canada. Remember to pick up your phone calls. <laughs> I've requested to have that changed. <laughs> Uh, Tony, that was on purpose. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, the Alberta CFO office was able to process the lending request quickly and issued an ATT via email. Uh, question to hosts, is a hard copy short-term ATT required? That's all for today. Thanks and good night. After I would. Run out. Yeah, I would recommend printing it out. Yeah. You sometimes, like a cop will accept on your phone, but others won't. Oh, on your way out to civil flats or something like that. And it's like, oh yeah, I have an ATT for, oh, it's on my, oh, uh, I can't get the internet here. Yeah. Well, yeah, you'd have, yeah. <laughs> okay. I'll just take your handgun for now and yeah. uh, you can come down to the station later, dig it out of the stinky locker. I have it like sitting in the bottom of all dented and dinged. And once you <laughs> give me the ATT, you can take, have your gun back or print it out. I just print mine out. Yeah, yep. easier to print it out and throw it in some godforsaken bin and not just not have to look at look for it, right? Yeah, P keep it with your registration certificate. Yeah, 
And as for Kodiak not responding, yeah, 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 that sounds par for the course. Well, no, they they used to be better for uh, responses, but I haven't, I uh, haven't, yeah, I haven't heard great things. And same thing for uh, uh, Lockhart Tactical. That's uh, some people have been commenting on my video, like, oh, it's taken a really long time. I, I ordered something like a month ago and it, I haven't even got a, a shipping <laughs> or, uh, notice. It's like, yeah, that's that's par for the course. And they're like, oh, they're su suffering from success. It's like, now they were like that before too. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that's, yeah. uh, that's just how it is. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, thank you for that email. And uh, we'll get into the YouTube comments. Uh, first one is from Justin B on Adriel's first look at the Bren 2 MS converted for Canada. But dude, that extended barrel looks terrible. Yep. <laughs> but it's not yeah. restricted. Yeah. Yep. And then the next uh, next comments are from Eddie on last week's show. He said, hey, where's Tony? He hasn't commented yet. And uh, Mo, five stand is fun, but I prefer sporting clays. Be careful about the clay sports. They can be addictive and expensive. And then Adriel, that CIL ammo is probably a collector's item. You might be able to cash in on that. Probably is. Hmm? Now, who's going to buy it? I don't know. You have to get to like, uh, maybe if you took it to a gun show or something like that, maybe that's the, the kind of person to buy it. Yep. And then uh, he's got a comment for Kelly. He said, there's now a wildcat with a wood stock. Do you feel better about it as a maple seed rifle? <laughs> <laughs> no. It's just there with the wood or, or synthetic. Yeah. Uh, do we got a uh, list from Cabela's or Brownells? Or nope, you, nope, no, not, not this week. That'll be okay. that'll be on the April, first of April show. Oh, okay. Uh, we don't have you, an what? April 1st show this, this year. Hmm. It's too bad. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But uh, we do have affiliate links for Brownells or Cabela's, and you can go to slamfireradio.com, and right in the side banner has those links. And if you click on that, we'll get a little bit of a kickback from your from your order, and it doesn't cost you anything more. And yeah, once a month, we'll go through all the purchases and anonymously read them out, and either congratulate you or shame you on them. We've been actually have, having some pretty good purchases on there. Yeah. I think for the most part, other than the Walker razors, yeah, <laughs> the Walker razors are on sale at Cabela's right now, but don't buy them. Yeah. Uh, if you want to send show an email, you can send it to slam radio at gmail.com and we will read it online. Uh, you can also find us on player and Patreon. And we also have discord and there was some stuff. So I was posting some stuff about the week goings on and yeah, there was some weird conversation was, going on earlier this week, but uh, that's very I was posting minimal. Some photos too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Kelly even stopped in to say hi, so you know, might be a chance of finding her on there, or we can just start a whole wildcat conversation, and maybe then she'll come in and start raging on us. <laughs> you know, all you need to do is like ping her in there, right? Yeah, yeah, just ping her. <laughs> Uh, before the show, Adriel and I were talking. I think we're going to do another stage breakdown show. And uh, what do you think? Like Saturday night? Or is that what we were thinking? Uh, sure. Yeah, I could do that. Yeah. So mm -hmm. Saturday night, say eight o'clock. Eight o'clock Mountain Time. Yeah. Just remind me. Yeah. So I don't forget about it. Okay. So yeah. Uh, should we call? contact a special guest or no i don't know just... had expressed interest before uh up to you okay <laughs> well we'll talk after the show anyways uh but yeah, yeah. so there we go uh eight o'clock on saturday adriel and i will go live and i have lubbock video superstition mountain video and possibly roswell video adriel's got a couple matches there too to go through mm -hmm. so yeah should be another fun night Tearing apart our stages. Just talking, talking shit and watching range footage. Yep. Uh, yeah, that'll be either on, well, that'll be both on Adriel's YouTube channel and then 
my uh, well yeah adriel's youtube channel so hunting gear guy if you don't know what that is and then on lunatic tactical on twitch we should schedule it now so that we've got it yeah andy yeah sounds good uh but with that we are going to get ready to si uh, sign out so do you have any shout outs uh yeah just for how many people came out for the three gun build and cleanup uh lots of times i go out there and there's like four or five people to trying to do we have a lot of props and mm. we built uh we rebuilt uh some bases to act as target bases adjustable target bases and we got through 50 of them and trying to do that with like four people would have been and doing all the other things that we're doing clean up the admin boxes we re-sorted and inventoried all the steel we couldn't have done that with with a short number of people but i think we had like a dozen so thank nice. you to everyone who came out and helped because it made it very quick to uh to get through awesome and i'm going to shout out the awesome squad and housemates so the canadians who made the trip down made the trip really fun and yeah the rest of the squad and these staff at superstition mountain for putting on once again a memorable match and really challenging us this year because they <laughs> they said they definitely cranked it up this year and then for my br brother who came out the whole weekend to uh film film all my stages for me so yeah i, I want a, a film guy <laughs> i never get a film guy I, I just get like other people in the in the squad to to film me i've never had like a dedicated yeah. recording guy cameraman yeah <laughs> no yeah it's not gonna be an all the time thing he just happens to to live in the area now <laughs> andy andy yeah uh yeah. but yeah with that we are going to sign off so join our discord server watch us on facebook youtube and player and twitch as well uh mm -hmm. join the ccfr and we will see you next week good night Later, everyone